Okay, so uh, you've, you've seen what it means for the uh, information worker. Um, I'm going to show you uh, what it means for the developer. Now, this is going to be a bit more uh, hardcore in the sense that uh, you'll see people doing programming stuff and all that. Um, so I might speed up over on certain aspects of, uh, of the uh, demo and, and, and go to the end. Um, but um, uh, before I actually go into the demo, uh, I want to give those people who are developers here an idea of uh, what actually the Azure data market is. It's basically based on uh, Microsoft's Windows Azure platform, which is a cloud computing platform. And within Windows Azure, you have uh, uh, a number of uh, a series of, of components. Uh, the, the base component is, in fact, the operating system component, which, is, which provides you the compute, the storage, storage and the management on a web uh, in the cloud. Uh, you have a very important component that is used by uh, Windows Azure Data Market, which is SQL Azure. SQL Azure is actually a database uh, on the cloud. That means it's the same uh, database that as, uh, as the, the one that you can purchase from Microsoft. But this one is uh, available on the cloud, so they can use it as a service. Um, App Fabric is, are basically the components needed for, uh, uh, by you as a developer when you want to interface your application sitting within your company firewall with those applications sitting on the cloud. For example, the uh, Windows uh, Azure cloud, or it could be some other cloud like Amazon or whatever. Uh, because as a developer, you probably need uh, uh, these kinds of components to actually exchange data um, on, on the cloud over the internet. And of course, we have the Windows uh, Azure uh, component, uh, Windows Azure data market components such as uh, uh, those that I've talked about, billing and APIs and, uh, uh, and, and uh, basically the data as a service component. Um, how do you program um, Azure Data Market? Uh, you can use, of course, uh, Visual Studio, which is Microsoft's uh, set of tools, the developer tools, uh, for you to program, um, uh, that, that people use to program the programs with on mobile devices or on the web. Um, but you can use other tools like Eclipse, uh, Python, and then you can use other languages if you're not, um, if you don't want to use uh, um, uh, .NET uh, programming languages, you can use uh, Python or PHP. So we have tried to make this, make this a very open platform. The um, um, a word about the um, open data protocol that I talked about, uh, uh, that I mentioned briefly. Uh, this is basically the uh, protocol that developers use uh, to actually access the data in the Azure data market. Um, it is actually a, um, a very simple to understand protocol in a sense that if, for those developers who know SQL, uh, the SQL query language, the standard query language uh, used by all databases, uh, you probably understand how uh, uh, all data works. Because it's basically um, SQL, uh, but over HTTP, that means over an internet protocol. Um, so it is an open standard that's published, web, web, web. .codata.org, and um, the way you access it and, and is to uh, use all data, but before you actually get access to the data, the, you have to authenticate yourself, and we basically use, uh, when you buy a data set, we basically give you a key, I think you have seen that in the demo, uh, that you can then uh, program with in order to, uh, to get access to the data. Um, the pricing model for the, the uh, developer, there are basically two uh, uh, pricing models that you get with Azure Data Market. Um, there is one pricing model which is uh, that of unlimited subscription. You just pay a fixed amount per month and you get unlimited access. 
um, to the data set. Um, there is uh, optional throttling that means the content provider can, can, um, can impose uh, uh, throttling. Throttling means uh, impose a limit on the speed of access, on the rate of access, on the volume of data consumed. And self-renewing, limited subscriptions, it's limit, it's lim as the name implies, it's limited, you pay X dollars, but for a certain number of given transactions per month. So once you hit the limit, you, cannot, you can no longer get, get access. And you can convert it to a different subscription at any time. So you can get crossing and, and it is also self-renewing. Uh, this part, um, I'm not going to show. I think it's uh, I'll pass this. Okay, just an illustration of how uh, of the different ways of uh, of how the access actually uh, takes place. So, a developer would come in and access uh, Azure Data Market uh, via the OData protocol, which is uh, therefore over the internet, HTTP based. Uh, you will access the first component, which is the data source connector. What the data source connector basically does is that it will actually pull data out from a, uh, a mapping source. This will allow it to say, aha, he, uh, this person intends to get all of this particular data set, and this is how I'm going to uh, access, uh, how I'm going to get the data out from the, from the back end in order to satisfy this particular uh, customer. So there are um, various ways of getting data, um, which also illustrates the various ways in which content providers interact with, uh, 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 provide their data to Azure Data Market. Uh, I would say the most classical, the most classic way is to, to use a database, a data residing in the database, in particular within uh, SQL Azure. And so what, uh, uh, what the all data, uh, what the data source protocol, uh, data source connector would do is to get all of the mapping information and says, aha, it is, uh, it is actually residing in a SQL Azure database, and it would then um, uh, uh, do the transformation necessary, pull out the data, map the uh, all data protocol into a SQL query, get back the information as a SQL table and then remap it back into OData, into HTTP, and present it to the, to the uh, uh, user. There are other ways of interacting with uh, the Azure Data Market. Um, you can, there are some people who uh, do web services. That means they have some data within the data center, and they actually expose it upon uh, web services. Then basically, we have to map it. Uh, uh, we have to map it back into OData. And you might even have a third party, uh, a very specific kind of uh, uh, data in a th third party in, in some other cloud, in another format. And you probably need, and you probably need to implement a specific uh, piece of code there to dialogue with this particular uh, third party uh, uh, data source. So these are the various ways in which uh, we onboard data. So this, I've said, I've said that in another slide, so I'll pass on this. Uh, so how do I buy it? Um, and how do I sell it, basically? Um, most of the times you see that uh, you, if you browse the, the Azure Data Market uh, website, you see a free and, uh, you quite a bit of free and common, uh, free uh, data sets. There are some that, are, that you have to pay for, and you have to put up, pick up your credit card and pay for it. Uh, others are actually free. Um, it's the content provider has to set the price. You will have to basically say how much you uh, will have to charge you. Um, what basically uh, it means is that uh, he sets the price and then um, we take care of the billing and uh, we agree on a certain, and, and, and Microsoft would uh, charge a certain amount Based on the uh, based on the consumption, um, 
uh, based on the uh, on the same prime. So we take a cut uh, of the uh, of the of the thing. Uh, as I said, there are two supported subscription models, and uh, and people pay by credit card. So basically, um, as a provider, that you are you are in control of your data. Uh, you set the price. You provide the terms of use. Um, that is to say, different data providers would have different terms of use, and uh, um, uh, this was not shown in previous demos. But uh, the, the, uh, the data provider will have to provide us with a specific terms of use that he requires uh, the subscriber to sign onto. Um, as a provider, you get easy publishing. You don't take care of all the plumbing concerning the hosting and the, uh, uh, concerning the hosting, the network, um, concerning the programmatic aspects like uh, what API to use and, 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 and support that you might have to give your consumers, uh, your subscribers. Um, and as a, as a provider, you get the periodic reports and payouts which you will require for your match. Um, locally, I just want to mention that uh, you guys might have heard of uh, some project that uh, Microsoft in Singapore has done, uh, which is um, which dates, uh, which actually predates uh, uh, Azure Data Market. So we're very similar in nature. I'd like to give you an update of So this is the project Nimbus, and it was launched. Uh, uh, it was launched uh, quite recently in 2010 last year. And uh, today we have eight providers with 50 data sets. Um, and uh, well, this architecture, I'm not going into it. Um, very similar to, uh, and its architecture and its base functionality is very similar to Azure Data Market. Um, but basically, what what, uh, what Nimbus is today is that it is actually the, I would say, the missing link between uh, um, between no data as a service provided by Microsoft and uh, the final data as a service, uh, which is Azure Data Market. So this is uh, view it as a as a, a precursor of Azure Data Market. Um, our aim was actually to promote the data market uh, data as a service. And um, basically, very much uh, to show uh, things that our technology can do uh, in terms of cloud, of uh, 